Hello all, welcome to part 11 of the Security Tube GNU Debugger Expert course and certification. In this video, we will look at how to install Debian RML in Humio. Now, of course, you're asking yourself, why do we need to do that in the first place? Now, in the past 10 videos, we've looked at running GDB on x86 32 based systems and if you remember, we said we'd like to experiment with GDB on other CPU types. And ARM probably is one of the most popular ones out there. Your mobile phones like iPhones, Androids and all of that typically have an ARM processor powering everything behind it. Now, I can imagine that a lot of you may not have access to hardware which is actually using an ARM based processor and hence what you would ideally want is to create an ARM based emulator inside which you can go ahead and run GDB and other programs. This is where QMU comes to our rescue and QMU allows you to do ARM emulation. Of course, once you have an hardware emulator, the next thing you require is a software which can actually run on an ARM based system. Debian RML is probably one of the best ones out there. And in this video, what we are going to do is install Debian RML in QMU and then install all the essential GCC, GDBs and all of that, compile a simple program, look into it using GDB. Now, if you'd like the PDF slides and code file, you can either tweet the video or you can just pay $1.50 to support us, get the slides, code files, high quality video downloads, a mock exam, finally take the real exam. And if you pass through that, you get a PDF based certificate. Okay, so the first step of course, uh, is to download QMU as of this video, QMU 1.2.0 version is what is available. And before you actually start uh, compiling QMU, it's a good idea to do go to apt get build dep QMU. So let's try that out. So we, so this is my directory in which I've already actually compiled QMU, uh, just so that we can save a bit of time. The first thing, of course, in your case, once you download QMU 1.2.0, is apt get and then you do a build dep which is building all the dependencies and then going ahead and ensuring everything is done this will ensure all of QMU's dependencies are installed right uh, I've already done it hence there is nothing much to do here the second thing to do of course is to run the configure command now here there is something very very important uh, target list needs to be mentioned where we need to specifically say we need an ARM based QMU emulator, right? So target list ARM soft MM, small typo here, it needs to be soft MMU. So target list ARM soft MMU, right? Now this ensures that we have something which can run an ARM based software. Okay, let's go ahead configure. This takes some amount of time. All right, and then it's just simply make and make install, right? I'll leave that to you. After you've done this, the next step, of course, would be downloading the Debian RML images. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. You can download this from the official Debian website and then go step by step to installing Debian within QMU. What I've really done is I've kind of you know, this, this video really is more about using GDB on ARM rather than the whole installation process. So you already have images all created for you. 
uh, from this specific URL, people.dbn.org, blah, blah, blah. And you can go ahead and download it from there. I've already done it. So this saves all the installation time. And I can tell you, uh, if you try and install QMU basically from scratch, it's going to kill you. It takes a lot of time to do it, right? So what I've actually done is I've downloaded Debian Squeeze RML. This is a standard one, which means it's already all installed into this little hard drive. I then have downloaded the initRD image and the kernel, right? Now, what we really need to do is use QMU to actually launch this image. Now, what we need to use is QMU system arm. This is what we need to use. And if you've configured QMU properly to actually use the arm uh, soft MMU target, you would actually find this binary all installed for you. Now, there are a bunch of options. I've put all of them inside launchvm.sh, which is available for download with this video. All we do is call QMU system arm, uh, go ahead, mention the kernel, mention the init RD image. We go ahead and mention the hard disk, which is where you know Debian arm is already all installed for us. Uh, basically go ahead and say that, hey, root is dev SDA one. This is the amount of RAM which we are putting in. And the last part is interesting, which is reader TCP 222, uh, 222. I'll come to what that is a little bit later on, right? So once you have everything downloaded into the same directory, which is all of these three files, Debian squeeze in it, RD and VM Linus. And this is the URL from where you can get all of these three files right, very small downloads, hardly 200 to 50 MB, you could go ahead and run launch VM. Right, this actually launches QMU and in just a bit, you would actually see that your ARM based system is booting up. Right. Now, while this is still booting, now, if you have downloaded here, they've also documented that the default user account is user, password is again user, and uh, I think the default user for root is this root, right? So, now, as you can imagine, once this boots up, it really isn't that fun to probably type in away into this little small terminal here, right? Uh, so what I really want to do is to be able to SSH in here. Now, what I actually have done using the reader command, which I just shown you here, is what I'm basically saying is, hey, any connection which comes to TCP port 2222 on the host should actually be redirected to port 22 on the guest, which means if I SSH, to my Ubuntu desktop server on port 2222, this is going to actually redirect into our ARM based machine, All right? Fantastic. So let's actually go ahead and do that. What I remember the password is user maybe not the password is actually root then there you go right in your case uh, before you can do all of this SSH and everything just remember that you would actually need to go ahead and first install all of that in this ARM machine. So you could basically have logged in with root, root, now the ARM based system is exceptionally slow so you probably have to bear a little bit with it. 
if you've done everything right, this should have internet access. You could just do an apt get update, probably update uh, all the different details. Once that is actually done, I'm probably going to kill it in between. All you have to do is apt get install ssh. And once you install SSH, you just need to further go ahead and install GCC and GDB as well. I mentioned it here, install SSH, GCC and then GDB. Right? I've already installed all of this. So remember to do that before trying to SSH from the other terminal. So then after that you have GCC and then you have GDB. Right? So I've done all of this, keep that in mind. Uh, without doing the installation for SSH, you really cannot go ahead and, you know, kind of SSH into it by using the TCP redirection, which we talked about. Also, you will not have GCC or GDB in it. By default, it's going to have nothing in it, right? So please remember to do the installation first using the GUI you have access to here. Awesome. So now I have a predictable directory in there called SGDE in which we have another predictable directory video 11. And what I've really done is I've just created a very simple file main.c. Now by default, Vim doesn't exist, but you could have Vim.tiny, which is installed by default. There you go. All I have done is a simple hello security tube in the world of ARM, right? I go back in here, I use GCC, exactly the same way, really there is no difference. And we compile for ARM. Right? Now please note we are running an ARM system, 256 MB RAM. Most things on this are dead slow. And if you try to install ARM, you know, the regular way, which is basically boot up with the installation disk which you can download from Debian's website it would typically take you between 45 minutes to an hour and a half right that's what it took me so that's why i'm kind of using this quick and dirty method because really this video is more about gcc and gdb uh, rather than arm installation right okay so let's just go ahead hit file on main and if you notice this is now basically for ARM. We could run main. Fantastic. We could load up main in GDB. Right? Awesome. We could do basically all the things we did just like before. So we can run the program. There you go. We can set a breakpoint on main, run it once again. Now we have hit the breakpoint, right? Uh, for most stuff, if you really do it at the application level, which is just look at the source code, add breakpoints, look at the variables, most of this stuff is exactly the same. Now, the different comes in when you want to do low level stuff like play with registers and things like that. So when you look at info registers, you're going to be in for a shock uh, if you've never really looked at ARM before all your little EAXs and all of that have now been replaced by R0 to R12, SP, LR, PC, and all this stuff, right? So these are your ARM CPU registers, which have totally different names. And one of the other things is that the ARM calling convention for functions is entirely different, right? And ARM, of course, has its own assembly language. So if we're going to go ahead and do a disassemble on main, Again, huge surprise because, you know, all your, well, you know, stuff, EAX and all that, again, is just using CPU registers. Uh, you're also going to look at a bunch of instructions which really are not there, uh, you know, in comparison to what you've seen previously. So we'll take up the ARM calling convention and how to look at all of that stuff in the next video, right? So that's basically it for this video. Enjoy installing ARM and hopefully you're going to get this all up and running. Run the sample program which I've already given and uh, 
please leave your comments behind right thank you very much have a great day ahead bye bye